Gala, his turn came. He was glad to take out the coaches and meet old friends. He met Rusty up the line. You know, he said, if I couldn't see the old places, I'd think I was on a different railway. Rusty laughed. <laughs> well, we hoped you would. Mr. Hugh, our foreman, said, Rusty, Scarlow is coming home. Let's mend the track so well that he doesn't know where he is. And we did. And you didn't, if you take my meaning. Scarlow chuckled away. He liked this hard-working, friendly little engine. There's still one bad bit, said Rusty anxiously that evening. It's just before the first station. We hadn't time. Never mind, said Scarlow. It's much better now than it was. Maybe better, but it's not good, replied Rusty. An engine might come off there. Peter Sam and Sir Hand will take care, and so do you. But I'm worried about Duncan. He will do rock and roll. I shouldn't like his passengers hurt. What's that about me? I'm a plain engine, and believe in plain speaking. Speak up and stop whispering in corners. Rusty told Duncan about the bad bit of line and warned him to be careful. Ha! <laughs> ha! He grunted. I knew my way about, thank you. I don't need smelly diesels to tell me what to do. Rusty looked hurt. Never mind, said Scarlowy. You've done your best. He said no more, but he thought a great deal. Next morning, Rusty left Duncan to find his own coaches. Duncan snorted and banged about the yard then clattered crossly to the station. James was there already. You're late, he snapped. I know, said Duncan. It's that smelly Diesel's fault. He thinks he can teach me how to stay on the rails, and then goes off and leaves me to find my own coaches. You poor engine, sympathised James. I know all about Diesel's. One crept into our yard and ordered us about. I soon sent him packing. Duncan gazed at him admiringly. He didn't know that James was boastful and sometimes didn't tell the truth. Send him packing! Send him packing! snorted Duncan. He climbed the first hill furiously. Well done, boy. Keep it up, encouraged his driver. They were soon near the first station. Duncan was pleased. Nothing's happened! Nothing's happened! he chortled. Silly old diesel! Clever me! and he swaggered along, doing his rock and roll. Steady, boy! His driver tried to check him, but too late. There was a tearing, cracking, crunching sound, and Duncan stopped bumpily. Sleepers and ballast! he exclaimed. I'm off! And he was. I warned him, said Rusty crossly. Duncan, I said, you be careful on that bit of line. But all he did was to call me names. Mr. Hugh kept turning Rusty's handle. Come on, he urged. Start up. No, Mr. Hugh, sir, I'm sorry to disoblige, but I won't help that Duncan. I'm ashamed of you, Rusty, said Scarlow severely. Think of the passengers. What are they going to do? Oh, said Rusty. I'd forgotten them. I'm sorry, Mr. Hugh, sir. We must help the passengers. And his engine roared into life. Oh, dear, thought Duncan. Now everyone will know how silly I am. Presently, Mr. Hugh and Rusty brought sleepers and old rails. Mr. Hugh showed the passengers how to use them, and they soon levered Duncan back to the line. Duncan was extra careful all day. Rusty, he whispered that night, thank you for helping. I'm sorry I was rude. That's all right. I wish all diesels were like you. Let's be friends. Suits me, smiled Rusty. We'll mend that bad bit first thing tomorrow. <laughs>